Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Tim Wangi, a resident pastor life church international in Muru, and also the founder and the president of True Mentorship Society. I want to thank the Y254 and for this opportunity even to share the word of God on this Father's Day. And let me begin by saying Happy Father's Day to all the fathers outside there and congratulations because uh, the responsibilities and the roles of a father are very technical but you have made it bravo to you and congratulations. And allow me to briefly speak about fatherhood. One of the things that we need to understand, there are almost five types of fathers. There are almost five types of fathers. Number one, we have absent fathers. That means the father is available, but he's absent. Either too busy looking for money, too busy trying to make ends meet. They are too busy outside there, but they are absent. One of my lecturers told me, the effect of an absent father, whether he's a drunkard or a preacher, the effect of an absent father to their children is the same. So there's no excuse, I'm a pastor. If today I'm not present for my children, the effect of my absence is the same as the effect of possibly a socially irresponsible father. The second thing we have, abusive fathers. And we find all these fathers in the Bible. Abusive fathers, remember there are two ways of abuse. One, there is verbal abuse and there is physical abuse. And sometimes what we don't know is that when you become an abusive father or you are raised by an abusive father, it affects you psychologically. There are many people who were distorted psychologically because they grew in the presence of abusive fathers. Physical abuse is very painful. But one, one wise man wrote and said, when you break my leg, I can put a bandage on it. But when you break my heart, there is nothing I can do. And words once spoken, they can never be returned back. They, it is more heartbreaking when words are sent to people. The other father that we have is what, what we call an absent uh, or, or no father at all. You know, there are people who've grown and they've never met their fathers. Possibly they're dead or something happened along the way. And you know, it's also there. The other one is we have present fathers. These are fathers who are there and they have sacrificed. And I want to talk majorly about these present fathers. They have sacrificed. You now I may make sure that everything is available. And if you're there and you're a present father, congratulations on you. If you're there, you're an absent father, an abusive father, please, I believe we can pull up our socks and just be present. The greatest thing that children remember in life is not even the presence that we give them, but is our presence. Memories are not made of gifts. Memories are made of time spent together. I know we live in a dull world country, and sometimes we can be caught up chasing on the paper. We can be caught up trying to give our families a decent life. The worst thing that can happen is for you to do everything as a father, but you're still a stranger to your children. That's the worst thing that can happen, that you have paid school fees, you have provided a decent house, you've made sure that they have decency of life, but you're still a stranger to them. That when you meet on the platform of conversation, you're still a stranger to them. And the Bible, of course, is very key. When we look at the language of the Bible, is that God introduced himself as a father. And, and, and Jesus came to play the model of a son. That is why he's called the son of God. And we see this language from the beginning of scripture. In the book of Genesis, Adam is a son of God. And God introduces himself as a father. In the book of Malachi, we begin to see it is the language of father and son that, you know, I will restore back the hearts of the sons back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers back to the son. Meaning that this is a very paramount thing. Jesus came to model sonship and God himself models fatherhood. There are many fathers mentioned in scripture, 
But when you go through the story of Esau and Jacob, and we see the dealings of them both before their father, one of the things that we begin to acknowledge is that fathers carry blessings. Fathers carry blessings. And this is very key, especially in our age. Najwa sometimes atuna shida ya kutafta pesa na kupelekea pasta. Sometimes atunanga shida ya kutafta pesa na kupelekea mabeste wetu. But sometimes we have a problem to look for a gift and to honor our parents. Allow me to tell you, there are only two offices that are mandated by Zion to bless your life. The first office is the office of a priest. And the second office is the office of a father. Baraka za nyumbani zinakuanga zimebebo na baba mzazi. And fathers are very important. Though they are the most ignored, they are very important. And so whatever blessings that a priest can give you, a father cannot give you. And whatever blessings that a father can give you, a priest cannot give you. So we cannot substitute. These are very important authorities. Very important. Matamshi ya mzazi, especially baba, inaeza kuwa laana na inaeza kuwa baraka. There are destinies of men that shifted because a father spoke. And there are destinies of men that, that went downward because a father spoke. Fathers are authorities. And that is why there are two children of the same father, Esau and Jacob. And, and, and what they needed, what they needed from the father was the blessing. And you need to understand that whatever Abraham gave them was not money. Whatever Abraham gave them were words. The greatest thing you can get from your parents when they are still alive, the greatest thing you can get from your father when he's still alive is his words of blessing. One writer wrote and said, the greatest treasure and inheritance you can leave for your children is not what you leave for them, but what you leave in them. Now, two children are presented. And of course, Jacob masquerades as Esau. The body, the voice is Jacob's, but the body is Esau. And you know, the father asked him, is this really Esau? And he says, yes. And then the father blessed him. When Esau came back, the father said, I have no other blessing to give you because I have given your brother all the blessing. Now, in the Jewish culture, the firstborn was mandated for a double blessing. So, and the secondborn was mandated for the, the other blessing. So what happened is that when Esau sold his birthright, he sold the legal gate for, for, for Jacob to receive the blessing. That's why the father said, I have no blessing left. But listen to me. In this blessing, there is nothing material that was given to Jacob. Akupewa do, akupewa ngombe, akupewa makeja, aliambiwa tu ni bless. And when Esau came, the father said, I have nothing to give you. Now, when you study the life of Jacob, after the blessing was announced, when Jacob landed in the house of Laban, the Bible says that Laban succeeded because of Jacob, because he was working with a man that is blessed. In fact, Jacob left the house of his father with a staff, Kijiti. There was nothing, no blessing, nothing. Akingia Bethel, Akilala Juyamawe. He had nothing, but he carried the blessing. And personally, I believe that the words of a father in blessing are powerful even to shape and navigate your life. There are destinies that are shaped because a father spoke. There are destinies that are aborted because a father spoke. The difference between a curse and a blessing is that a blessing is the utterance of wellness, but a curse is the utterance of doom. And a blessing is not released when a man is about to die. A blessing is the words of wellness that are released by a father when he's still alive. When I look at the systems of the scripture, many men and fathers spoke after people served them. And one of the things that we can do, number one, we need to serve our parents. Remember, the Bible does not say honor your good fathers. It says honor your father and mother. 
meaning that it is the role of us as young people to understand that we ought to honor those that are senior. Pastor, are you trying to say that my drunkard father can bless me? Yes. Are you trying to say that my polygamous father can bless me? Are you trying to say my father and I know all his weaknesses can bless me? Listen, when he stands as a father, he stands in an office. And according to spirituality, that office, when it speaks, an authority has spoken. His flaws have no power to hinder the authority of his blessing. So let us not weigh fathers according to their results and actions. We need to see them as authorities and people that have stayed in a certain place. And they step and speak from a certain area. So the blessing is wrapped up in a father. And it is very key for my generation to understand that fathers are destiny shapers. And fathers are destiny handlers. How we treat them matters a lot. We need to serve them. Number one, you need to serve your father. You need to be available. Service is about sacrifice and time. You need to be available. The second thing that we need to do, we need to honor them. There is a difference between obedience, there is a difference between respect, and there is a difference between honor. Those are three words. Obedience is unto instruction. Respect is unto rank, but honor is unto grace. Obedience is unto instruction. We can obey anyone, even policemen, but we don't honor them. Respect is because of rank. You know that this is a person who has a certain office, but honor is a language of grace. What is grace? You begin to acknowledge there is a deposit in this man or there is a deposit in this person that this deposit is from above. And the language honor has everything to do with substance. When the Bible says, honor your father and mother, it is not about instruction. It talks about substance. Nika kitu. Ii language ya honor inakuanga nika kitu. Tuma ke mpesa, mbaye lunch, mbaye kitu. Bless. That is how you honor your parents. Mafarisi wali kujia Jesus. Akawambia ile ona mnafaa kupea wazazi. Mume ileta kama kwa tempo, mume ileta kama koban, mume ileta kama sadaka. Na kuna generation wanaleta do church. They don't struggle giving to church. Kuna wase, they don't struggle kurushia madem tei. They don't struggle doing that. But there is a man who paid a price for you to be where you are. There is such a struggle, even sending a thousand, five hundred, to tell that man, dad, you labored, and I just want to honor you. And any time a man is honored, the heart is open, and the tongue utters blessing. Ukingia katika kalto nonanga mzume mpe pesa metemia tumate na mesema pale zimetoka wacha zirudi. That's how men receive their blessings. And there are doors that can never open until you honor your parents. This is a principal thing. Allow me to read a scripture in the book of Genesis 49 as I begin to conclude. The Bible says, And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear you sons of Jacob and listen to Israel your father. Gather together, you sons of Jacob. The name Jacob means trickster. But Israel was the name that Jacob was given by the Lord. After he wrestled with the Lord, he got a new name. Now we need to understand, when we are looking at our fathers, there is a Jacob side. This is the side of weakness. You know, you stay with your dad for long, you discover he has weaknesses. But never forget, every father has an Israel side. He said, sons of Jacob, gather and listen to your father Israel because they knew their father from a place of weakness but it was not the place of weakness that was going to bless them Israel is the sign of strength and prophecy and ordination so it was Israel who was blessing the sons and when you read the whole of Genesis uh, chapter number 49 what happened is that Jacob blessed and cast in equal measure like he begins by saying, Reuben, you're my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity, the excellence of power, and stable as water, you shall not excel. Now that's a curse. And the words that were uttered upon Reuben happened. It took Moses to reverse the curse upon Reuben. What am I trying to say? Sometimes the words, there are people who struggle with words that were released by men who died. What am I saying? 
The words of a man don't go with him to the ground. A man can be buried, but he has left living utterance, either of blessing or of curses. And my prayer is that in this Father's Day, anyone that has a problem with their father, you will seek for reconciliation. Remember, the junior should always pursue the senior. It is wisdom. You should seek for reconciliation. The tongue of your father is tied with blessing. The second thing, if you're there and you're a father, possibly the Bible encourages us also not to offend our children. You should also seek for reconciliation. As a father, please, master the art of always blessing your children. The utterance of a man over his children, over his family, is more powerful because a man is the priest of the house. On this Father's Day, I want to celebrate all the fathers for the battles that they have fought, for the sacrifices that they have made, and for the things they have gone through just to see us wherever we are. And for my generation, what we are we're young, let me remind you, kuna baraka za mzazi. Awezi zipata supa, awezi zipata church, baraka ya mzazi mara nyingi na kuanga tide kwa mze, na mzendo na kuanga the priest of the house. So please, be wise enough, serve that man, honor that man, Submit under that man. Fellowship, interact with that man. One word from that man is enough to open possibilities over your life. May God bless you. May God watch over you. And have a blessed Father's Day. Pastor. Well, well, that was really powerful. I want to appreciate Pastor Tim Wangi for doing that video for us. It was really 